Now, first of all, just to be uh, just to reassure everybody, I'm a diehard gold bug. You know, the uh, raison d'etre of both gold fields, you know, is to develop, advance uh, Eastern North America's largest placer gold deposit. And also, we want to find out where that came from, the source of that deposit. Uh, I encourage everybody to look at my other videos, go on our website, download our presentation. We're doing great advances uh, on that, and there's more to come. But phosphate, why phosphate? As a businessman, I just could pass up the opportunity of grabbing an asset on the cheap. What I mean by on the cheap is that we did map staking. There's nothing less expensive than, than map staking. So we didn't buy it from anybody. Uh, we own it everything outright. So, but, but then again, why phosphate? What, what made me excited about phosphate? Let's talk about that. I knew that phosphate is an important ingredient for fertilizer. I mean, without phosphate, we couldn't do industrial scale agriculture. In other words, no phosphate, we die. You know, you got to feed the, you need it to feed the world. And also what, uh, what I was intrigued about is that it's the concept of peak phosphate. Now, some say if there's no new, um, if, there's, if there's no new big discoveries of important phosphate deposits around the world, in about 10 years time, we reach what's called peak phosphate. In other words, we start having towards a downward trend depletion of resources. So, so you can so see, it's an important resource. We need it to feed the world. Now, out of nowhere, a couple years ago, pretty much, the leading battery, which has been widely adopted for all electrical vehicles, is the LFP battery. LFP stands for lithium iron phosphate. The P in it is phosphate. I find that interesting. So now we're, we're talking about basically is that a resource which might become limited, it feeds the world, and now there's a whole other industry which is coming out of less field saying, hey, we need some of this phosphate for batteries, you know, electric cars and then all other applications. So what do I see here? Well, I see a resource which is going to be in high demand. I see a resource uh, which is a, an opportunity. That's why we took all these phosphate properties. It didn't, it didn't cost much to take, but once you take them all, you got to pick and choose. The funds are limited, so you got to be strategic about it. What's nice is that in that whole bin, that whole grab bag of properties, we found a nice gem. It's called the CH98 property. So we went back uh, this fall to locate where there was a sample taken, uh, a historical sample that was taken, a grab sample from an outcrop back in 98, hence the property, which uh, had an unusually high grade, like almost 9% phosphate, you know, or P205, which was really unusual. And uh, so unusual that when we spoke with the geologist and made the discovery, he believed at the time, he says, well, it was such an outliner that it must be a mistake. Luckily, we found the outcrop. And what's nice is that, yeah, it's pretty, just to give you an idea, put everything into context. Our property is in the Lac Saint-Jean area. The Lac, it's called the Lac Saint-Jean Anorthite, Anorthite Suite. That's where basically most of the main deposits of the high quality phosphate. Another thing that, I, that uh, apparently some of my peers in this business have, uh, have said is that the Anorthite Suite that we have in the Lac Saint-Jean area, it's igneous rock that contains the phosphate. There's two types of phosphate deposits around the world. Most around the world, it's a sedimentary rock phosphate deposit but they tend to have a lot of impurities in that. Uh, but especially when you want to use it for batteries and even, even fertilizer, you can't put anything in that. You still need something pretty pure. To make phosphoric acid, it helps when you start with a phosphate deposit that has the least amount of impurities. And that's what Quebec has apparently. So we got some of the highest, purest, igneous rock formation phosphate bearing mineral in the world. And that's something. So we're part of that. Um, so like I said, we found the outcrop that was uh, discovered. And um, now we maybe know why it was uh, sort of overlooked and why nobody grabbed it in the past is that it was atypical, as we say. The mineral that contains the phosphate, the P205, is in a mineral called apatite. That's a nice crystal. And just to give you an example. Typical for the region of phosphate-bearing ro phosphate rock, it's, it's a gabbro. It's a gabbro norite rock, which contains a lot of iron. As you can see, the rust on the side right here. So in this rock, the little white specks you see, well, that's the apatite crystals, the phosphate bearing crystals. This is typical for the region, apparently. Look what we found. <laughs> CH98 outcrop, look at this. Um, the thing is that it's not, it's not typical. Um, you see the greenish yellow crystals you see, which is very dominant in this rock? That's apatite, I mean, it's something. Now, what we want to know, so again, this is, it's, it, this is unusual. We found an outcrop, but what we don't know and what we want to find out, is there a lot of this stuff, you know, for one. Another reason may be that this was overlooked. The fact that there's, uh, you know, the fact that there's very little uh, iron in it, it doesn't stand out when you're doing aerial magnetics 
for surveys. So this could have been easily overlooked. Um, so this is really exciting. Now we want to know if there's more. Was just is just this a small anomaly? Is just a small lens, or is there is, is there a nice big structure with a lot of this stuff here? So that's something which uh, we're gonna have to find out. Uh, you know, when we go back to the property. But in the meantime, we sent this to the to the lab. We're going to wait results, so we're going to find out a lot of things about it. For the most important, what is the phosphate content or the P205 content? Also, another good thing is that on the property, we also have indicators we have uh, also found, uh, which is the more typical, more traditional, typical, you know, uh, gabbro type appetite bearing rock, which has to be investigated as well. You know, I can't wait for the results. Can't wait for springtime to come so we can go back and look at this. You know, another great thing about uh, phosphate exploring is that it's not like exploring for gold. You're basically looking at something which should be mostly at surface. So if it's too deep, it's not really economical. It's not as intensive exploration as, as gold. You know, you gotta find it at surface. It's gotta be pretty much an outcrop. And it's, and if ever, if ever it does become a, a viable economic deposit, well, they tend to be basically, it's a, it's a quarry. So um, yeah, we can't wait to go back. We might have something really exciting here <laughs> just by the look of all this appetite crystal in the rock. And there you go. So another reason I can't wait for, uh, for spring.